So coming into this year in college, the top three projected picks in the 2019 draft were all from Duke. RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, and Zion Williamson. These three guys are basically all people can talk about in college basketball right now. But in a lot of mock drafts, Cam Reddish has actually gone out of the top three. And this guy has actually gone into the top three in most mock drafts. And I honestly think if he continues to play like he is right now, there could be a legitimate case for him going number one. However, unlike guys like Zion or RJ Barrett, you know with those two guys, you're at least going to get a good NBA player. Whereas this guy has by far the highest ceiling, he has the most upside of anybody in this draft, but he also has one of the lowest floors in this draft. And that player is Ball Ball. And before this video starts, I'd just like to say I'm doing it daily December. I'm uploading a video every single day this month. Right now, it is the 18th of December, so there's another 13 videos after this. So if you guys like basketball content, subscribe. And also a big, big thank you for 80,000 subscribers. We started off December at 63,000 subscribers, and honestly, I didn't think that I was going to get over 70,000, which was the initial goal, and 80,000 is absolutely crazy. Anything more than this for the rest of the month is unbelievable, but let's see, I don't know, if we could hit 85,000 by Christmas would be absolutely incredible. But anyway, now let's get on to the video. So depending on where you look, Bowl Bowl is either listed as 7'2 or 7'3, and to be honest, it doesn't really matter too much what height he's listed as, he's still extremely tall. He's also got a 7'8 wingspan, so we'll have one of the longest wingspans in the NBA. He's also got NBA range. Yep, he's a 7'3", guy with a 7'8 wingspan, who's got NBA range at 19 years old. And he just turned 19 a couple of weeks ago. Bowl Bowl is like nothing we have ever seen before, so it's hard to compare him to any NBA player, and it's also hard to tell what he's gonna do in the NBA. While he won't have the best post game in the NBA, it's at least passable, and he's really good touch around the basket. His touch is good in pretty much all types of shots, hooks, fadeaways, and he just tends to just shoot over people because of how big he is. And I think at the NBA level, especially with the way people are going more and more small ball, he will still be able to shoot over the smaller guys. He surprisingly moves well for someone his size and someone as young as he is. When you, want, when you just look at him, you expect him to be a bit like Rob Bobrovsky, who genuinely can't walk. You expect him to be that type of a person moving. But Bol Bol runs straight line quite well. While he's not the fastest laterally, Running in a straight line, he's definitely, definitely gonna be able to keep up at the NBA level. Well, with centers anyway. While he's not the fastest laterally, he's so long that if he does switch onto guards, he will be able to contain their shots. While I think he will struggle a little bit at the NBA level guarding guards, I think he's just gonna be long enough that he's going to be able to at least make the shots difficult for them. And basically, once he's in the key, every single shot is going to be a difficult shot. No one can get an easy shot on him. He's just that long. He's gonna have a Rudy Gobert type presence on the defensive end. And while physically he may not be ready for the NBA, nobody expected him to be physically ready for college in his freshman year after what he's doing in high school. And he's playing great this year. So that's given a lot of scouts more and more confidence in this guy. It's gonna give a lot more NBA teams more and more confidence in this guy. Well, we all saw videos of him in high school handling the ball with apparent guard skills. I don't think he'll be really able to do that at the NBA level. And I honestly think his peak is Rudy Gobert with a jump shot. I honestly think that if all goes well, he could be the best defensive center in the NBA while being able to spread the floor. And for some NBA teams, that might be too good to turn down. While Zion is an athletic freak, and you can guarantee that he will be at worst an elite rebounder hustle guy in the NBA, RJ Barrett's an unbelievable player. If I was picking number one, I'd probably pick him. But Bowl Bowl's like nothing we've ever seen before. And he has the potential to be a one of a kind NBA player. And depending on who gets that first pick, I honestly think some teams might be intrigued enough to at least look at this guy and consider him for that number one overall pick in the draft. But at the same time, if his college career takes a bit of a dip, he may struggle to be a top 10 pick. Because even though he does something so well on the court, even though he may be just a once in a lifetime type player, we may never see a guy who's a physically gifted as Bo Bo be able to shoot like that and be able to move like he can. At the same time, he does have a lot of weaknesses, and the first weakness is that he's weak. Well, at the college level, everyone expects him to struggle, especially in his freshman year. He's actually doing really, really well this year, which is definitely, definitely a positive sign. But at the same time, when you're coming up against Boogie Cousins, when you're coming up against, even though obviously he's not an absolutely elite center anymore, if you're coming up against guys with the strength of Dwight Howard, 
if you're coming against these big bruising centers. While I know a lot of the time small ball centers and stretch fives are being used more and more, there's still a lot of guys that can bang you inside and I think that those type of centers he's going to really struggle with, especially early on in his NBA career. But the reason why I feel like he's the most intriguing draft prospect is that in the draft itself, I'm not going to try to predict his career, it's almost impossible to predict Bo Bo's career because almost anything can happen, but in the draft itself, I think he could go anywhere between 1 and probably at 10 or 11, because you never know. Whoever picks number 1, we obviously don't know who it is yet, it's looking like it's going to be the Suns, but if the Suns get number 1 pick, they're obviously not going to pick him. But if it's a team without a center, and you just never know, just like with the Pistons with Darko Milicic, nearly every team wasn't going to take, wouldn't have taken Darko. It was just that the Pistons fell in love with him because they saw the type of player they thought he could become. And you never know, I think that that could easily happen with Bol Bol. Some team at the very top of the draft could genuinely fall in love with this guy's game, think he's going to be the next best center in the NBA, think he's going to be a franchise changing player, and take him one of the top overall picks. However, if none of the GMs at the top of the draft feel like that about him, we could see him slipping to the low top 10s, even into the low lottery. I think he's 100% a lottery pick, but you honestly just never know. With a guy like this, with a guy who's got so high a ceiling as well as so low a floor, you just never know where they're going to be taken. But again, while I would definitely say that RJ Barrett and Zion are the favorites to go number one, it would not surprise me that much to see Bol Bol get taken with that number one pick in June. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.